okay. Uh, let me know in the chat, please. If you see us well and if you hear us well. Yeah, sound is okay. Thanks a lot. Okay, so now we can start. We're glad to welcome you at our regular live session. Today we will explore the important software features for radiology with an emphasis on body cancer imaging. The previous sessions on biomodeling and surgical, uh, surgical planning in virtual reality were intended to highlight the innovative features of Innovitech Daikon Viewer Pro. But today we want to return to the basics and uh, discuss the common software features which can help a radiology professional to improve their workflow. I'm glad to welcome Branislav Lukac, a radiologist and cancer imaging consultant with a great deal of knowledge and experience with a wide range of imaging software. Hello, Branislav. Hello, Yegor. Uh, dear colleagues and friends, I would like to greet you all on my behalf uh, and thank you all for joining our live stream. I would also uh, like to thank Yegor for inviting me to share my experience with the InnoBitech Daikon viewer and to thank the entire team of the InnoBitech LLC for developing what is, in my opinion, a truly remarkable piece of software, which is not just a simple Daikon viewer, but uh, a comprehensive medical imaging suite. I have been using it for almost three years now, and uh, I, I will be happy to share my experience with it. Uh, thanks a lot for your kind feedback, Renislav. We really uh, appreciate such a positive review. Uh, and my first question to you will be the following. How do you think a radiologist can benefit from working with the appropriate software today? I think the benefits of using adequate software are twofold. Uh, firstly, to save time while struggling with the ever-increasing workload and make dealing with it easier. And secondly, to provide the clinicians with clear and understandable depictions of the pathology, whether in 2D, 3D or 4D. Uh, that's really nice. And uh, before we start the demo, I shall say a couple of words about the program we use today for demonstration. Uh, Inobitech Daikon Viewer Pro is a multi-platform uh, solution um, designed for the advanced medical diagnostics and image processing. Uh, and it was developed to help the quality treatment planning as well. There is a wide range of basic and extended tools, some of which we are going to apply today. If you feel interested to try the program yourself, you can find the link to, the, uh, to download the program trial in the chat. And uh, another thing I wanted to mention is that today we would like to make this session uh, as interactive as possible. That's why your questions, remarks, and comments will be highly appreciated. I will try to pick out some questions from the chat during the demo, and we will try to discuss it. If we face high activity in the chat, we will even make a special break for Q&A session. So uh, now I shall turn it over to Branislav and let him share his demo cases. So you're welcome, Bronislav. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to briefly note that my work is almost exclusively related to cancer imaging, uh, assessing patients with advanced malignant disease, whether it is initial evaluation of an already uh, uh, extensive disease, evaluation of the treatment response and follow-up, or detection of a relapse. Therefore, this presentation reflects my personal use case scenarios and features of the software that I use most on a daily basis and I find most helpful, but uh, which may or may not be of relevance to you. I most sincerely hope that uh, you will find at least something of, of what we show today useful and worth a try. That's why I shall try to keep the unidirectional part of the stream as short as possible, as Yego has already noted, and to make it interactive in the Q&A section. Uh, before we start, I must apologize to all of you in advance, uh, because I'm a, a rather reclusive radiologist with a severe case of stage fright, and at one hand, and at the other, uh, uh, I, uh, while practicing for the, this live stream, I realized uh, that I find it difficult to speak and man manipulate images at the same time. So if at any time during the stream I begin to stutter or become unpleasantly quiet, please forgive me. It's not your internet connection, it's just me. 
<laughs> it's okay, Branislav. I, I think you will, uh, you will be great. Uh, okay, so uh, when we open uh, the, the Daikon Viewer, uh, we are greeted uh, with the local storage or local database view where all our exams are listed. And from there, uh, we can open the, the, t the 2D viewer, which will allow us to, to scroll through any series or studies that we may have. We can bring them in from the, from the uh, striped uh, thumbnail view from the side. Uh, we, shall, we shall go through that a little bit later. So we can quickly go through a study. Here we have a, a case of an advanced already disseminated lung cancer, as you may see. And then we shall move to the NPR views, which uh, we, uh, we open in, in multiple tabs to evaluate it further. As you can see, we can also extend it to the full screen view. As you can see, it is right lower lobe mass already already affecting right killer lymph nodes, subcarinial lymph nodes. Now I'm going to briefly switch to the brain window to show you. Okay. Right hemisphere metastasis, then switch back to the medicinal window to go to the rest of the of the study. Interestingly, there is a lesion in the pancreatic body, which is also a metastasis. We can quickly make a curved MPR to show it. It took you just a, a five seconds to build this kind of reconstruction. It looks yes, very nice. Yes, yes. Uh, and as you can see, we can we can remove the curved line in order to show to show the pathology clearly. Or and uh, I find I find the the curved reconstruction option very very helpful and and very very customizable. So I really do do like using it. And uh, we can we can switch it off quickly, and then go back to ev evaluating uh, the study further. An interesting finding of of a metastasis in the great romentum, which would indicate that that the, that the tumor we are uh, we are assessing now is is most likely a small cell lung cancer, and also what is what is rather interesting for lung cancer a small metastasis. And I'm now I'm now switching to to the three three D MPR pointer, a small metastasis in the mesorectal fat, which is which is not a frequent finding in lung cancer. So uh, this case show us actually uh, the, the basic options of 2D image viewer and, and MPR reconstruction views, which I yeah, the, really on, the, a, on, on, on a daily basis as my, I'd like to say bread and butter. <laughs> the basic view really of uh, yeah, you, you're right that the basic view of a single study appears to be excellent. Though uh, it sounds like an easy task for almost any imaging software, doesn't it? 
So, uh, could you please give us an, uh, any example when you need to compare two or more different studies of the patient? Yes, that's that's uh, practically the, the, my my uh, most used case scenario, and I'm going this case um, uh, uh, of of an oligometastatic relapse of ovarian cancer five years into the treatment and one year after the previous relapse uh, to show uh, how the viewer can can uh, uh, very easily compare two studies and five uh, find small and inconspicuous pathology. So we are going to open our first study in the NPR. And then the second study also in the NPR. So it is a case of a rather small volume relapse in an autocaval lymph node. So this is uh, February, February 19, 2021 exam. And we are going to compare it to, okay. To May 17th, 2022 exam. So, I'll, a little more than one year, and we can clearly see that this particular aorta cable lymph node has enlarged and is clearly metastatic. And we can easily demonstrate it in all three views, all three planes. Mark it, do the measurements, whatever whatever we need to do to to present it. So, and as you can see, what I what I find very helpful is that uh, windows in the NPR view can be zoomed independently. So we can sh we can show the lesions very zoomed in in one view and show their exact position in an unzoomed image in the other views. So I find this one to be very helpful as well. Well, that looks quite interesting, but uh, what about the comparison of the paired organs? And uh, another question, do you use any uh, shortcuts when you're changing the color tables and uh, how do you use them? Yes, yes. Well, uh, the viewer, the viewer actually has uh, in its in its in its settings uh, section uh, the ability to uh, customize the hotkeys that that we, as you can see, that that we use uh, uh, frequently. So uh, any user can basically uh, adjust the the hotkeys any way uh, it, uh, it finds suited. And so I'm using I'm using uh, Shift F3 hotkeys, for example, to bring inverse logarithmic color lookup table and Shift F12 to to use uh, the flow lookup table. And I'm going to demonstrate um, uh, how and when they may be of help. So the next case I'm going to show is uh, intended to demonstrate the value of the viewer in comparing paired organs. Uh, which implies opening two or more NPR views of the same series of the same study at the same time, a feature which some other software solutions on the market do not have. And uh, I shall also try to, uh, to show how inverse logarithmic and flow color lookup tables uh, can emphasize post-contrast op opacification of lesions and uh, allow us to perform a limited but very often useful evaluation of pathology for which CT is not the modality of choice, uh, like, uh, breast, like in breast imaging. So I'm going to open the same uh, MPR study uh, of the same uh, uh, Venus series whole body image of breasts. As you can see, this menu allows us to put uh, to put the images exactly where we want them, and I'm going to to make um, a maximum intensity 
projection of the breast tissue. CT is not, of course, the modality of choice for evaluating breast, but it can really be of assistance in, in, in some situations and in some cases. So I'm going to do a quick MPR render of the right breast and then the exact same thing on the left breast. Okay. I will use the center lines to show the borders within the quadrants. And then I'm going to use the inverse logarithmic color lookup table to show the multicentric cancer of the upper quadrants and the lower median quadrant of the left breast, and also a small focus in the lower outer quadrant of the breast. And when we switch to flow color lookup table, we can clearly see the difference in contrast opacification pattern of, of the breasts. So I, I find this to be really helpful, really. Okay, that's about that one. That looks really impressive, Brenny. Uh, I just came up uh, with the idea to ask you about the comparison of different modalities. Sometimes a radiologist needs this option to have a better picture of a certain lesion. Could you show us how the program meets this challenge, please? Uh, yes. Uh, oh, well, uh, the, one of the, of the strong points of the uh, InnoBitech DICOM viewer is its ability to combine different modalities and to show uh, different st series of different studies uh, in split screen mode or in full screen mode at the same time. So here we have a case of, of um, actually of a solitary uh, metastasis of uh, adenocarcinoma of the pancreas. So we have a previous exam that is MRI. Okay, and now we have a, a T2-weighted sequence and wait just a second, please. And we have a follow-up CT exam. I'm oh, sorry. I, I've already marked this one for, for what we are going to show later. But we have a small hemangioma in the right lobe of the liver, which can be seen here. But there is another de novo lesion right cephalid to, to the previous one. So if we, if we go to the MPR view, okay, let me just make it look nicer for a second. Okay, so now we have two lesions here. And as you can see, the view automatically splits the view when we add studies. And 
only one lesion on the previous exam. So this one is a hemangioma. And the second one is a de novo metastasis. And we are going to use this case later to, to present other interesting features of the viewer. Also, uh, as, as, as you may note, uh, we, can, we can actually open as many studies as we need or want, and then, and then bring them to the front or send them back as we need. So I find this to be extremely useful. And uh, I, I, I have to note that um, uh, you can see that I'm using this monitor in a split screen view. Uh, so basically, I have two virtual displays on one monitor. Um, we are showing, oh, showing only this monitor because uh, if, uh, if uh, we wanted to show you multiple monitors, you can, you can basically split screen on any number of monitors you have. And that allows you to place uh, multiple studies uh, on, on as many monitors you have. But we are not showing this option now because it would be too small and cramped. But it, I find it to be uh, very, very helpful. So basically, any number of studies on any number of monitors you have. Vani, uh, it's um, we we all we, we uh, quite often we have uh, requests uh, to um, about the uh, capability of the viewer to open mammography, uh, but we have to tell uh, the customers that we don't uh, actually have the dedicated hanging protocol uh, in the program. But can you please show? Uh, to the audience, uh, how the viewer can uh, handle these type of cases. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, the the split screen view allows you to open mammographies without a dedicated hanging protocol. You just simply click the studies uh, in the order you want them to open, and the viewer will do everything else for you automatically. So he here we have, of course, a standard native mammography and a nice depiction of of a speculated mass in the in the upper outer quadrant of the of the left left breast and and a benign appearing one in the upper outer quadrant of of the right breast and as you may see i'm constantly adding studies and everything that we have uh, had opened previously remains exactly where we left it so if uh, for example, someone asks you just to take uh, to take a brief look at something, and you are in the middle of doing something else. You don't have to open, to close what you are working at at the moment. You can just add studies, and uh, basically the only limitation that you have is your hardware. And we are going to discuss that a little bit later. Thanks a lot for your uh, demonstration of the mammography case. And uh, now it seems that we've uh, covered most of the basic features of 2D image view. Now uh, I shall check the chat uh, for the questions and decide whether we can we will make the separate Q&A session or not. Uh, give me a moment, please. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't have any questions except the praises. 140 FPS looks nice in NPR, very smooth. Alex Johnson tells us. Uh, uh, yes, yes, the, the viewer is actually well optimized for, for multiple uh, platforms. Uh, we can discuss that uh, in, in more detail later if, if the audience is, is interested in it. Uh, uh, oh, yes, I must, I must make a remark. Uh, we are doing this uh, stream in 1080p uh, in, uh, in order for it to, to be smooth. Uh, uh, I, I use 4K resolutions uh, on, on a daily basis, and I use uh, three 4K monitors uh, for, for my work. So, so the, the, yeah. the, the, the FPS count is excellent in 4K as well. Uh, I shall also use this break uh, between the first and the second part to announce that uh, in the middle of July, we are traveling to ECR uh, with the stand, and we're going to exhibit our software there. So if, uh, if you like, you can come and meet us live and ask us questions, and uh, we, can make, we can perform a live demo for you. 
Uh, we will be there since 13th until 18th of July in uh, the Vienna Congress Center in Austria. So everybody uh, who wishes to see the software live and who wishes to ask us the questions are welcome. Uh, we will be glad to, to see you there. Uh, I think it's time to move to the second part of our session and uh, um, we can uh, uh, try to demonstrate the advanced features and modules of the software. And as far as I know, usually the oncology cases require uh, the specific imaging modality called PET-CT. Could you please show us how the software help, uh, helps you to assess this type of studies, Brent? Yes, the viewer has a powerful PET-CT module, uh, which automatically opens a PET-CT study in a full window view. Uh, which uh, implies the PET, the native CT, the fusion of the two, and the 3D reconstruction. And it's also capable of opening two or more PET CT studies at the same time for comparison and to combine them with other modalities. And uh, this, is, uh, this module is uh, the only one which is not intuitive, uh, immediately intuitive, as I, I'd say, because what we need to do first is to open open uh, the series fusion view and to fuse uh, the low dose CT with the PET CT, then uh, go back to the, just a second, please, go back to the, to the storage view and then open the fused analysis in the PET CT module. Okay. Let me just try with another one. Okay. This one, never mind. So we can we can open uh, PET CT studies uh, and we can see them in PET view, native CT, the fused view, and the three D reconstructed view, and they are they are all open automatically. And what I what find to be very useful is is the point pointer tool, uh, which allow us to to quickly identify uh, the the spots of the um, increased FDG update. And another uh, very welcome feature is that the SUV values are shown uh, automatically while we scroll the mouse through the study. Okay, let me just try once more to get another PET city study open. So I'm going to. Actually, the additional modules and the advanced features uh, is uh, where the viewer starts to do the magic. Uh, yes, yes. It, it allows to perform the advanced analysis just with a couple of clicks of your mouse. Yes, yes. I, I'm, I'm not quite sure why, why it won't open my, my second study now. Let me just check it. No. You can select, you can select two yes, series here, at the here, same time. Here, here it is. Here it is. Yep. Okay, so it's, it's the, the, the same patient, um, one, almost one year apart. And now uh, what, what we can see now, so you mean the difference uh, in the scanning time is one year, right? Yes, yes. Uh, so one was done on November twenty fourth, twenty twenty one, and the second and the first one was done on on August twelfth, twenty twenty. And as you can see, there is a de novo liver metastasis, and as you can see, the FDG up, uptake is above eight. Of course, we can do we 
just the FDG uptake measurement. We can do it in volume as well, or we can combine the measurement of the FDG uptake with, with measurement of density, and we can bring out any of the individual views in enlarged if we need to. So I, I, find, I find this module to be really fantastic, actually. Uh, do you use any, any other mod, uh, additional modules of the viewer you know, on your daily basis? Yes, I, I use a vessel analysis module uh, to evaluate blood vessels, uh, and I use 3D segmentation module. So first, we are going to have a really brief look on the, on the vessel analysis module, and then we are going to shed some light on the, on the 3D segmentation, which, which uh, I am, I'm really uh, fascinated by, I must say. So let me just go briefly. So uh, uh, for now, the viewer uses uh, the subtraction method to, to, uh, to show uh, uh, the, the vessel structures. And as, as you've <coughs> mentioned, I think you're going to do some improvements on that one, on, on, the, on the subtraction. Oh, yeah. But uh, that we, will, we will keep it a secret for a while. Ah, okay. We will announce it, announce the, uh, okay. the changes a little bit later. Okay, great. So I'm now moving to the full screen view of the, of the vessel analysis module. I'm going to select the native study. Oh, wait just a second, please. I'll have to close some of my previous views. No, sorry. This one has I have some, some other studies opened in the background, which are, I believe, um, I'll wait just a second, please. Let me just show some of the, some of the already opened one and try again. No. Uh, could we move? Could, could we move to the three D reconstruction module, and then we'll come back because uh, uh, it seems that I've I've, I've exceeded my, the use of memory, and and I will, I will yes, and I you will, finally I will, you finally reached the limit of your machine. <laughs> and yes, it seems so, but I will show you why. So uh, let me move to the to the three D segmentation module, which which I uh, I have prepared I had prepared in the background. Okay. Okay. No problem. You can you can switch to the three D uh, to, to the segmentation. Yes. Yes. I've 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 uh, overstretched it now. So let me just close these. Okay. Uh, I think you uh, f uh, to remove this. Uh, you need just to reboot the program. Yeah. Yes. 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 Process. Yes. I've, yeah. I've I've had I've had many of them open at the same time. So. Um, that's nice that we can we can show we can also show how to um, get rid of the uh, memory over limit uh, that you can yes, just reboot yes. the I've, program I've, I've over, and then I've overstretched I've overstretched my my memory use but let us now allow show the vessel analysis module. Okay. You're, being, you're being too enthusiastic about it. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, well, now now it's going now it's moving smoothly. As as you may see, I have I have selected the uh, uh, the arterial uh, phase of the exam, and the native one to subtract the bones. Okay, now and the as, magic is happening. Yes, and as yeah. you can see, we we have we have a beautiful a beautiful vessel. Analysis structure. Oh, I must note uh, that I am using huge city datasets, 
as, as you may see, this is a whole body CT data set done in 768 by 768 uh, axial image resolution and 0.8 millimeter slices. So uh, my data sets are huge and hence the, uh, the uh, memory overload issue because I've had open more than 15 studies in the background. So it's not going to happen uh, on a regular basis because I'm really pushing the viewer to its, to its very limits. And as you can see, this is, this is a, lovely, um, uh, a lovely module. Now I'm cutting all everything else except the object to get a really beautiful view. And now we are going to, to show uh, how, how the viewer actually finds, uh, in this case, in this case, this is a, a left a, a hepatic bile duct cancer that has stenosed the, the left hepatic artery. But now we are going to, to show how the module actually works uh, for, for evaluating arteries. So we are going to use the two module, the two point, uh, the two point uh, option to, to get a stretched view to get a stretched view of the artery. And then we are going to, to use the analysis and to show that it's been stenosed. In this segment. Yeah, that okay. looks. So a really, really, really excellent module. Mm -hmm. Okay, now- That looks pretty are... instructive. Yes. Yeah. Now, now we are going to to switch to the to the MPR, or or and and to the uh, 3D segmentation. The 3D segmentation module has advanced tools for automatic watershed segmentation, semi-automatic region growing segmentation, and medial delineation of regions of interest, and it provides the possibility to show almost any pathology in 3D. Um, its size, exact positioning within an organ, and its relationship with other structures of interest. So I'm yeah. going to try to, to show it to you now. So I'm just going to briefly go back to, the, to this case. And in order to save time, I'm going to, op to open the, uh, the, the projects that I've saved of the segmented uh, uh, structures. Okay, now I'm going to switch to the 3D view. And as, as you may see, I've uh, segmented, oh. yes, the portal vein, the hepatic vessels, the liver, bones, aorta, and in yellow color is the metastasis and in green color are two small hemangiomas in the liver. So we can, we can practically uh, segment anything. And of course, uh, we can use the segmentation tool to remove uh, the structures that we have segmented in order to present only what we want. Yeah, that really helps in the preoperative planning, right? Yes, yes, it does. And as 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 you may note, the viewer uh, automatically calculates the volumes of uh, every segmented structure. So if we uh, if we want to to assess the, for example, the remnant liver volume uh, before the surgery, the viewer can do it very easily. So uh, this is a really, really a module that I, that I use most of the time and find it very, very helpful. Of course, I'm now going to, for example, remove the liver and, and leave just the vessels. And, and the veins. Yeah, use, use as, the mesh as, better. As, as you may see, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, exam uh, was, was not done perfectly. So the, the contrast opacification of blood vessels was not ideal, but the viewer has the option actually to, to compensate 
to compensate for 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 the uh, to 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 uh, I think a very good extent to compensate for for the uh, what's lacking in the quality of the exam itself. And as you can see, it can demonstrate demonstrate the structures in 3D beautifully. And um, also another module that I would like to show and that I really find very helpful is, is uh, the series fusion module that, that, that we've uh, briefly addressed while, while uh, doing the PET-CT. So uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open uh, a CT study. Of a small tumor of the left common hepatic bile duct of the of the left uh, uh, hepatic bile duct, and I'm going to fuse it uh, with the with the um, MRCP in order to show the blood vessels and bile ducts and their relationship to the tumor. So let me just quickly open the the MRCP, okay, here it is. So, and then I'm going to open the MPR view. And then I'm going to try the, to, to open the projects that I've, I've pre-saved. Okay, and when we open the 3D view, uh, we are going to have um, actually, wait just a second, please. So we are going to have the view of the, we are going to have the view of the blood vessels and of the dilated bile ducts in, in the same view. Okay, I'm opening them. And as you can see now, we can, we can switch between the few studies and, and we can, we can open basically all the, all the structures that we've segmented. Yeah, that looks really impressive. Yes, uh, and now, now because uh, we can, we cannot depict the bile ducts in the in the CT study. Uh, we can combine, uh, uh, as you can see, MRCP with CT to to show both the bile ducts and the blood vessels uh, in in the same study and in the same in the same image. So I find this to be really really useful as well. Great. So yes, and and as as you can see, what what I've done here actually is that I've uh, separately segmented the bile ducts for. Um, let me just remove the blood vessels, just for for a second. Um, okay, uh, I've, I've I've kept only the bile ducts now. As, and as you can see, it is a, a, a rather small tumor of the left hepatic duct with dilation of, of the bile ducts for, for, the, for the left lobe. And I've segmented them separately so we can switch them on and off uh, as we need them. So, okay. Now I'm removing the bile ducts for segments two and three and leaving just the, the common hepatic duct and, and the right and left hepatic ducts and bring them back, of course, if we need them. Okay, so that would be that case. And of course, switch on and off all other structures if we need them. Okay. 
so that that would be it for for the for the advanced module and i apologize for for the little glitch we had with the with the vessel analysis module that's just my my memory overload it's okay it happens sometimes uh even with the uh with the machines which are pretty uh pretty good for, for this type of uh, for this type of work, but uh, most uh, most of the of our customers they use uh, the regular laptops to operate the same type of modules, and they uh, they do quite okay with that. Yes. I think I think uh, you always shall mention the capability of your hardware when you. Uh, exceed the limits uh, because it is eating the uh, the memory very 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 much. Well, uh, as uh, as I've said, I'm I'm using extremely large studies, so I'm I'm always using whole body studies uh, done in natively and arterial portal venous and and delayed phases, and I'm using 768 by 768. Um, um, axial uh, image resolution for the CT, and it really eats up a lot of memory. But um, uh, as you may see, the viewer uh, deals with it uh, uh, very smoothly and very easily. And I've been testing the viewer for a long time now, and I've been testing. Uh, I, I must mention that the viewer is being developed for for all three major uh, uh, operating system platforms. Um, available today for, for Windows, for Mac OS, and for Linux, for different Linux distros. And I found that even um, uh, relatively modest uh, laptops with six core CPUs and let's say uh, GTX 1660 Ti uh, laptop GPUs can handle 95% of the workload easily, especially if the C CT studies are done in 512 by, by 512 axial image resolution. Uh, I, I haven't found any problems so far in, in handling those studies. Uh, if uh, we move to CT studies uh, with uh, 768 by 768 axial resolution or, or 10, uh, 1024 by 1024 uh, axial resolution, uh, the uh, the um, amount of data is simply uh, overwhelming. And uh, then uh, the user will need GPUs with 12 or more gigabytes of RAM. So I'm currently using a GPU with 16 gigabytes of RAM. But for most applications, I, uh, I repeat, the, the hardware requirements are, are really modest and the viewer is very well optimized. And GPUs with 6 gigs of RAM uh, will be more than enough. And I just didn't mention uh, whether you meant, whether you told us about uh, the, the fact that you are running the, the software at all different available platforms, like you're running it at Linux, Windows, and Mac OS. Yes, yes, I'm, I'm running and testing software all, all, on all three platforms. Uh, for this presentation, we are, we are using Windows, and I must note that I'm using Windows 11, uh, which is known to be unstable at times. So uh, the memory overload issue that I, that we've shown that we've seen uh, could be also uh, 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 in in uh, in part the the Windows 11 memory handling error. So it may okay, not be, it may not be related to the viewer itself. So I'm I'm really using. Um, uh, uh, I'm really pushing my hardware to the limit, but could also be a Windows 11 issue. Yeah, I, uh, from our side, uh, I just uh, I can tell you that uh, we're happy to have you uh, as our user uh, because uh, you're pushing uh, our software to the limits. You're testing it on different platforms, and we're really glad that such a professional uh, has the ability to. Um, work uh, with the viewer on a daily basis and give us uh, different kind of comments, remarks, and reports. Uh, th thank you uh, again for uh, attending attending th this webinar and helping us uh, to demonstrate the capabilities of the program. And I think uh, uh, we will be happy to see you next time uh, and to call you to uh, 
to make sure we can see in other cases uh, of the viewer. As long as the program is progressing, uh, we're trying to uh, give out the new releases uh, every three months, uh, practically four times a year, uh, adding some new functionality and uh, polishing the current functionality. And we try to meet the requirements of the uh, up-to-date radiologists and uh, other medical professionals who work with the, <clears throat> with the medical images on a daily basis. So I uh, would like to say thank you, Branislav, and thank you, thank you for everybody who is attending the stream. Uh, and I think uh, you liked everything you've seen here. And if you have any other questions, uh, you can ask us directly um, using the contacts in this description of the video. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we always try to post uh, new videos here. Thank you, Branislav. It was really nice having you here today. Thank you, Diego. Thank you for having me.